Hi, I'm Scott Sackett. If you like this video, please, please take a second to subscribe if you uh, and leave a review. Um, today I'm going to talk about this book, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way is pretty much like the title says. It's a book um, detailing how to draw comics in the Marvel style, shall we say. Um, it's a book that has kind of, um, uh, is not as popular as it used to be, um, because the style, maybe you can tell from the cover if you're unfamiliar, the style tends to be an older kind of style of, uh, comic book art. Um, but I think this book is still very relevant. And so I'm going to talk about the history of the book and at the end I'll have an announcement. So, uh, this book was written in 1977 by Stanley. It was published in 1978. Um, it, it originally came out in paperback, um, at the time that it was published, Marvel had a deal with Fireside Books. They had, uh, previously released a book called Origins of Marvel Comics. Um, this was Marvel's attempt to, uh, get Marvel Comics in the bookstore market. Fireside Books published regular books. Marvel was not doing any sort of graphic novels at the time, um, I think the uh, there was a Silver Surfer novel that I think came out in 78. But originally, uh, I think Son of Origins came out in uh, 76. But it what what they did in Son of Origins was it, was, it was written by Stan. Stan wrote an introduction, and then before each chapter, he wrote a story. Each chapter covered a comic book. For example, one chapter talked about the Fantastic Four. And... There would be an introduction by Stan that would talk about how the comic was created. Then there would be the a reprint of the first issue, and then there would be reprint of a current issue. Now, current would be from you know seventy six ish. Uh, so now they're all they would all seem old, but but Origins of Marvel Comics did that. They did the they did the Fantastic Four. It did uh, I think it did Nick Fury. It did Iron Man. It did uh, I forget who else. Uh, maybe the Avengers. Um, but it was it was it, it sold well, and so then they did the Son of Origins, the Son of Origins, similar concept, except it had, um, it had uh, a little deeper in the Marvel catalog. I think Son of Origins had the X Men in it, for example, um, and and it, it, and I highly recommend those two books. I had them when I was a kid, really really enjoyed them. I liked them, and to this day, I would recommend them almost as much for what Stan Lee. His introduction and his introductions for each chapter. It's great to see Stanley's take on uh, the industry. It's certainly a snapshot of the comic industry um, from the the mid seventies, you know, uh, and and going a little bit further, of course, talking about the older books. But but it's a it's a great uh, piece of history. Both those books are. There were a couple more. There was Bring on the Bad Guys, and there was uh, uh, Women of something something. Uh, Women of Marvel or something. I forget what the I forget the other one was. I, I only had the first two. Now I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, so we didn't have a big bookstore in my town, and so I didn't have this book as a kid. I did have the two origins, uh, Son of Origins and Origins of Marvel Comics. I was a huge Marvel Comics fan uh, in in those late seventies days, and so I I got both of them uh, on my birthday. I remember we went to the city and went to a uh, I think it was a B. Dalton bookstore, and I got them there, uh, and I still have them to this day. Those both those books are great, and like I said, what I love about them is the um, the the voice, if you will, of Stan Lee. Um, this was the Stan Lee that I grew up with, not the Stan Lee that a lot of current fans are used to, uh, who, as as the guy that makes his cameo in the movies. So anyway, so this book was published in seventy seven. I did not have this book as a kid. Um, and, and, and after they did this book later, they did this. Now this is a DVD and I think this is originally out on VHS actually. Um, and this would have been recorded. I think it was recorded in the, in 88. So this was done in the late eighties. And, and basically this goes through this book is Stan talking to John Bushima and he's drawing examples from this book. Now this is pretty good. If you haven't seen it. Um, you can see these, you can see this online. This is available online, probably at YouTube, but it's easy, uh, to find. I have the DVD, um, and, and that's a great thing. Now in, uh, 
83, they did a Marvel tryout book. I do not have, they did, they've done two. They did the first one in 83 and, and it was a bigger, it was an oversized book. It's 11 by 17. It had comic pages in the back of it. And then it had a script and you could draw that and you could send it in. And it was, it was almost like a contest and they would, and they announced that they would actually hire one person based off of these submissions. And, and the artist they hired was an artist named Mark Bagley. Now, if you're familiar with Mark Bagley at all, it's probably because he did the first, uh, I think, 100 issues of Ultimate Spider-Man. He's a, he's a really solid artist, but he came out of that um, when he won that. And I, didn't, I don't have that first one. Now, they redid it in 93, I think, and I have that one. And now that one they didn't have a contest on. And it's updated. It's it's geared around the X Men. The X Men were a lot more. The first one was geared around Spider Man. Um, the X Men were a lot more popular than Spider Man in the early nineties. Eh, they were they were more popular than they were certainly in the early eighties. Um, and so it focused on the X Men. There was not a contest, and as far as I know, nobody got a job out of that. Or if so, it wasn't something they announced. But um, that's an interesting book. But this is really the book I want to focus on now: How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Uh, like I said, it came out in 77. I did not have a copy. I would have loved to have had this when I was a kid. No way was I going to have this when I was a kid, though. It just wasn't, it, it wasn't something, um, first off, I don't think it got racked with where the comic stuff would have been, what little there was at the time. Um, I don't know where it would have been racked. I, th this just wasn't a thing that I was going to get, but I would love to have had it. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit, but um, I didn't see this book until after I got out of art school. I used to work with a guy, um, and he had a copy of this at his desk at work, and when we were slow, I would flip through it. I wasn't even reading comics at the time I first saw this, and so it wasn't, and I certainly wasn't trying to draw comics, so it wasn't as interesting to me as it would have been when I was a kid, or maybe had I seen it later, but anyway, the guy at work got fired, and so... I went and I and I found my own copy at at a uh, bookstore and bought a copy of, of this. Now, I have a soft cover copy. This is a hardcover copy. Now, the guy at work had a hardcover copy, but his was a standard hardcover copy with a uh, dust jacket on it. This is a, like a, what they call a library edition. So it's hardcover, but it's printed on. Um, it's it's this follet bound, and so this is kind of I don't want to say it's rare, but. Um, but I, I let's just say I was very happy to have this, um, and and I I love this book. Now I, even though this book is considered dated in terms of art style, I I feel like a lot of material in this book is still um, valid and it's still a good uh, a good learning tool. And and I believe that if you learn the principles in this book, then you can become a a very proficient comic artist. Will you work for Marvel? Who knows. But it, you'll certainly be, if you know the principles in this book, you'll certainly know be a lot closer to getting a job drawing comics or maybe creating your own comics than you would if you don't know this stuff. So let me let me talk about what's in the book real quick. Um, so the book was put together by Stan Lee. Stan Lee uh, wrote it. And I'm not sure exactly what the breakdown is on who uh, who wrote it, who... How much, uh, how much involvement John Bushima had in the book? It's got an introduction by Stan Lee, and again, like I said, this is the Stan Lee of 1977. This is the Stan Lee that was in straight on huckster mode, um, and I say that with the with the deepest of and most genuine love. I I love the Stan Lee of this era. He's a guy that was um, always positive, always enthusiastic. Um, Obviously, he was younger than he was in the when, we, when a lot of people saw him in the movies, and so he was he was probably more energetic, I would say. But but he just was really in um, at the time he was out in Hollywood, and he was really in in cell mode. Okay, so let's talk about the individual chapters. I'm gonna let me go through the chapters, and I'll talk about why I think it's so important. Okay, so the tools of the trade. It talks about the tools. Some of this is dated. I'm not gonna go through all that. Every art book has something like this. Talks about the the uh, the different what the different stuff on a comic page is called. Um, this goes through a, a uh, I would call it like a dictionary of storytelling stuff like bird's eye view, worm's eye view, you know stuff like that. Just te gives gives you the introduces you to the language of the uh, of storytelling as it applies to comics. Um, 
this chapter is about about form about solid drawing it goes through it has some examples and uh and it shows you how like a gun for example is made out of these basic shapes and you make a revolver there out of those shapes um and and uh again it could be it, this is something you have to work at one thing this book probably falls short on is it does not it shows you examples but it doesn't tell you how to practice that um necessarily so but it does show you these examples and this is cool because it shows shows the comic and then it shows that broken down and so it's got a lot of and this is why i think the book is probably considered dated uh maybe by a lot of people because all these examples the the newest examples are from 77 and so um and so this was in the bronze age so it's considered uh it, it has an older style of art in it certainly okay and this one's about, this chapter's about perspective kind of a basic breakdown of perspective again it doesn't really it doesn't cover any of this in real depth but if if you were to take this book and master all this stuff and it talks about some of the breaking down of perspective and how to how that works uh chapter four is on the figure has some basic heroic type proportions talks about ex uh, examples of how you move away from heroic proportions then it talks about gesture drawing um it talks about stick figures. I've said all along, I've, or I've said uh, forever to people that have asked me about drawing, if you can learn to draw a stick figure well, then uh, you're on your way. Um, you know, and these are well-drawn stick figures. And again, it talks about scribbling a figure, has some examples, different ways to draw a figure. It talks about action. Action is where it really gets into and this is this is where this book really shines because this talks about what Marvel's looking for, you know. This is good. That's bad. That's good. Um, just the the idea of exaggerating the the the, uh, uh, the all the gestures and it has uh, good and bad examples. You know, uh, this is what you don't want to do. This is what you do want to do. And again, this is stick figures. But if you can do the stick figures, you can do the thing right. And then it it talks about how poses. And it compares a, a weak pose to a strong pose, a nice action pose. And it's funny because Stan Lee will talk about, you know, this is good for normal comics. This is what Marvel's looking for, um, you know, all throughout the book. This is, all the examples are competitors. And this is a page of breakdown. Now, I got a funny thing. This page right here is printed upside down. It's hard to tell, but if you look at it upside down, it makes more sense than that but it's it's act it's figures in action doesn't really matter um and it's this way in every edition that i've ever seen of this book by the way but i was looking at one down i go that thing gets upside down but anyway this is some great just gestures uh, you know, uh, uh great impact gestures talks about filling out the figure what do you do after you've drawn that that stick figure and it takes you th step by step through creating figures then it's got some examples that it's got com in the comic and then the stick figure, you know. Now it talks about foreshortening, something that, that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people learn to draw struggle with. Breaks that down. How do you figure out for foreshortening? More examples from the comic. And examples and the examples broken down where you can see kind of what's going on behind the scenes. Just great stuff here. Um, drawing the human head, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it goes through, it has some principles for drawing heroic people, uh, heroic women, heroic men. Uh, you know, what a, what a comic book. And Bushima, he came out of the romance comics. So his women are always look like, uh, like, 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 uh, romance comic women. Um, you know, they're all pretty, so to speak. Um, anyway, let me, let me get through here. There's quite a bit about, there's a lot of information here on drawing the heads. A lot of examples. Composition. How do you compose a, a, a page? How do you compose a panel? Talks about the line of action. Talks about, you know, moving the eye through the page. You know, how you do that with forms. Again, this isn't something you get in a lot of drawing books. Um, and so and so everything we've got so far will lead you up to drawing a good comic book. Um, if you can master all these, you know, talks about composition of a panel. Here, here's a great example. Talks about a regular panel and a marble panel. How do you exaggerate in the panels? What what do you do to make the panels uh, look good? Here's an example of a page. This is a good page. It's an okay page. This is a marble page. 
you know, if you, like I said, if you can master this stuff, I feel like you'd be, I feel like this book has everything you need to, to, to know to, to draw comics. Um, okay. So here it breaks down a little bit more detail on how you, how you would, um, how you would take a script and what you would do. So, or plot, cause they work from plots at the time. The plot takes you through the, uh, through the detail of how you would draw that step by step. And it talks about the cover and uh, it shows um back up it shows different cover ideas you know and it'll t it says like what would good ones bad ones why they were why they'd be rejected why they'd be picked um you know that goes to that and then talk, the, talks about inking how to ink um you know very traditional inking kind of style it talks about you know good uh, good page over ink page it has you know an example of what you want to do what you don't want to do too light of a page right here you know the the extreme of the other one you know shows you how to determine how much black you want on a page um then it talks about spotting blacks and then the last is a is a a, a bibliography it's got some anatomy books um some books on composition books on perspective Books on animals. Then it's got like I talked about mood and philosophy behind comics. If you want to, if you want to make comics, you gotta know what comics are like. Bring on the bad guys. Origins of Marvel Comics. Son of Origins of Marvel Comics. The superhero women. That was the women one. Um, anyway, uh, that's the end. The credits at the end. But anyway, like I said, this is a very very good book on how to draw comics. I feel like it's a good book on how to draw but specifically as it pertains to comics. Now, of course, it's somewhat dated. The style is more of a Bronze Age art style, but if, if you go through this and you learn all this stuff, then you will know, I feel like you'll have a good grounding how to draw comics. So that's where I'm, I'm gonna make my announcement. Uh, I, I've decided I'm gonna record some tutorial videos and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use how to draw comics the Marvel way as my guide. I'm probably gonna do them on uh, Monday or Tuesday evening, and I'll put them on YouTube. I'm not going to do them live, but I'm going to go through the book chapter by chapter. I'm going to try and keep it short so you can watch it. I'm going to give you some, uh, some, some homework, basically, if you will. One of the areas where this book is lacking is, is um, stuff you can practice on. It, it'll tell you, but, but a lot of uh, modern drawing books give you work on this, do this, do this, do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and work up um, more of a curriculum, if, if you want to call it that way. I'm not a teacher, but I am an artist, and I've, I've, I've taught a lot of artists at my work. So I feel like um, I can go through this, and I can, I can guide you. I, I want to do it so that I can learn this material too, but I also wanna, want to put something out that maybe people can, can study and learn, because um, I feel like the art of drawing comics has kind of become stagnant lately. And I want to inject some of this Marvel energy into it. And so I'm hoping that I can share that with the world and maybe do my little part to bring this back um, and put some life back in the comic industry. Anyway, thank you for listening. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Keep an eye out. I will, uh, I will do some tutorials coming up very soon. Thank you very much. Good night.